Hey guys, Dean Chase here with another geometry lesson for you. I hope you guys are all doing good. Let's go ahead and get this thing started with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for staying with us, Lord. I want to thank you for all you do. I pray that you'll be with my students. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to teach them and just help them learn. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Alright guys, so today's lesson, lesson 2.7, is going to be prove angle pair relationships. This is lesson 2.7. If you're in the book I'm working out of, page 124. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Sometimes a new theorem describes a relationship that is useful in writing proofs. For example, using a right angle congruence theorem will reduce the number of steps you need to include in a proof involving right angles. So the theorem 2.3, the right angles congruence theorem says that all right angles are congruent. So um, we're actually going to look at the proof. We're not going to do it. We're just going to look at it for how that works. And what that really says is we get to use the right angles congruence theorem. And when we use it, it cuts out these four steps you would have had to use to prove that something is uh, congruent. But because we have that, now all four of these steps will become one step. So let's look at this proof. We're given that angle one and two are right angles. Angle one and two are right angles. They want us to prove that angle one is congruent to angle two because that's what the right angle congruence theorem says. So the first thing they did was write the given, which is angle one and two are right angles. Then step two, they tell you what the measure of their angles are, which are 90 degrees by the definition of right angle. Then three says, the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two by the transitive property of equality. Since they're both equal to 90, we're able to say their measures are equal now. And because they're equal, we also know that they are congruent. So major, I mean the angle one is congruent to angle two by the definition of congruent angles. Yeah, um, like I said, it really actually helps to read proofs just because it helps you develop that logical thinking. Um, let's just keep going. So they want us to write a proof given um, line L is perpendicular to line M and line L is perpendicular to line N. They want us to prove that angle one is congruent to angle two. So the first thing like we do in most of our proofs, let's go ahead and write down our given information and the reason why we'll be given. Um, angle one, I mean, sorry. L is perpendicular to M and L is perpendicular to N and the reason is it's given. Now we know that if two angles are perpendicular we know that they're going to be right angles. So angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles because of the definition of perpendicular. If something is perpendicular it means it intersects to form right angles. Okay now we just learned this theorem. Um, we could say that because we know the right angles, angle one and angle two are congruent. Because of the theorem we just learned, right angles congruence theorem. Okay, not bad, right? Um, example one, done. Let's just keep rolling. So two more theorems for the day. We have the congruent supplements theorem. If two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. If angle one is supplementary to angle two, and angle three is supplementary to angle two, then angle one and three are going to be congruent. And that would make sense because um, if angle one is supplementary, it's going to be a certain number, but it would have to be the same number to be supplement. Three would have to be the same number for it to also be supplementary to two. And this is a lot like the transitive property if you're looking at it because they're both supplementary to two, which would make them congruent. Um, in a roundabout way. So congruent complements theorem, same as congruent supplements theorem. If two angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. So angle four is complementary to angle five, angle six is complementary to angle five, then angle four would be congruent to angle six by the congruent complements theorem. Okay, let's just go ahead and keep on rolling. So they want us to write a proof that, um, we're given angle one and angle three are complements, angle three and angle five are complements. They want us to prove that angle one 
is congruent to angle five. So let's just go ahead and write our givens, okay? Excellent. Now, we just learned on the last slide, if two angles are complements of the same angle, so angle one is a complement of angle three, and angle five is a complement of angle three, we can actually say that angle one is congruent to angle five by the congruent complements theorem. Okay, that was really simple. Um, a two-step proof, man, why can't they all be that easy? Anyways, I hope that makes sense. Let's just go ahead and roll on through. So intersecting lines. When two lines intersect, pairs of vertical angles and linear pairs are formed. The relationship that is you used in lesson 1.5 for linear pairs is formally stated below as a linear pair postulate. The postulate is used in the proof of the vertical angles congruence theorem. So the linear pair postulate. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary, okay? Don't forget that, okay? Supplementary means they equal 180 degrees, which means that they're a linear pair also, if they're on the same line, okay? Um, vertical angles congruence theorem. Vertical angles are congruent. So what that is saying is that angle one is congruent to angle three in this picture, and angle two is congruent to angle four. So I should do double arches there. Okay, vertical angles congruence theorem. Don't forget that, you're gonna use that all the time this year, so let's just keep going. So example three, they want us to write a proof. So we're given that angle two is congruent to angle three, okay? So let's go ahead and write that down, um, and that is given. Next, we need to look for something, how we could prove that angle three is congruent to angle six. Well, by the looks of it, angle three and angle six really don't have anything in common. Um, but angle two and angle six do have something in common. And that is that they form vertical angle. They are vertical angles because they're formed by two linear pairs or contained by two linear pairs. Um, two lines, okay? So angle two is congruent to angle six by the vertical angles congruence theorem. Okay, so now we know two is congruent to six and two is congruent to three and we're trying to prove that three is congruent to six. Well, we could say that angle three is congruent to angle six by the transitive property of congruence, okay? Because both numbers um, three is congruent to six, which is congruent to two, if that makes sense, okay? Here, let's look at it here. If we look right here, three is congruent to two, six is congruent to two, so by the transitive property, three is congruent to six. Okay, enough of that, let's just keep going. Example four, which equation can be used to find x? So here, we have a right angle, right? It's a right angle. And a right angle equals 90 degrees. So this total measure equals 90 degrees. Um, so to solve this, we would have to add this and this to equal 90. So if we look at A, 38 plus 38 plus 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3 equals 90. Oh, that is right, okay? Um, this one wouldn't be right because this would have to be a straight line that they're solving for, so that wouldn't work. Um, C, 38 equals two x minus three. If this was an angle bisector, that would work, but it doesn't say it's an angle bisector, so that does not work. And then the last one, who knows what on earth those people are guessing, but it is definitely wrong, okay? Um, anyways, I hope you guys are all doing good. Thanks for continuing to watch the videos. Um, keep it going. Feel free to subscribe and like, and you know what? Have a good day. See ya.